In a stunning decision, the Colorado Supreme Court has kicked Donald Trump off the 2024 state ballot. David Bonson is with me this morning. David, before we start talking about economics and the economy and everything, what do you think about this? You know, I think I'm a good person to ask because I'm one of these guys who's a conservative Republican my whole life. I haven't been a big fan of Donald Trump all the time. This is outrageous. It's outrageous. First of all, if he is guilty of things on January 6th, the voters can decide. The voters should decide. But there's a lot of things they can adjudicate. It's outrageous and it will get overturned by the Supreme Court. All right. Let's switch to the economy and particularly the Fed. Uh, talk about politicalization yeah. of things. Some people are suggesting that the Fed is is making a political statement with its calls for or suggestions that they're going to be uh, lowering the rates in 2024, that they may be trying to help Biden get reelected. What do you think of that? Um, I think that there is always a political element to the Fed. Always. There's no question they would have been cutting rates anyways, whether it's an election year or not. They should have been cutting rates already. They shouldn't have ever got this high. I think if it was crass, really dirty political, they wouldn't have been so tight in 2023. I mean, part of the noose around Bidenomics was Fed created. So I don't think that they're a purely political actor here with sinister motive, but I think they're worried about the reputation and that is somewhat political. You know, we just heard a great historical reference from Karl Rove, but there are historical references you were telling me before we began about the Fed sometimes getting political. Well, that's right. In 72, they really kind of helped Nixon with monetary policy. It was Arthur Burns. Arthur Burns was Fed chair. In 94, with Greenspan, they really hurt Bill Clinton and helped Newt Gingrich with those midterms. Not only were they tightening in 94, they shocked markets by tightening. So it's it's bipartisan. It's worked on both both ways. All right, we're looking at the market down a bit right now. It has been, of course, green, green, green for the past uh, several weeks. Uh, It looks like they're unaffected by everything that's going on, whether it's international trouble or political trouble at home. Is that going to continue? Um, Sort of rising above uh, the news. I think it's going to level out a little bit. It's gotten pretty frothy. We're at high valuations, but it was all about bond yields, David. As bond yields came down, risk assets came higher, stock prices, S&P, Dow at all-time high. Um, I don't know that it goes a whole lot higher from here unless you get really good earnings results in the first quarter. But I, I think it can level off here because they know that the biggest headwind is out of the way, that the Fed is going to start becoming an ally to risk assets. Markets have priced that in. And you're going to be here for the whole hour. Yeah. But I just want to ask is, do you think that 2024, generally speaking, is going to be a good year for the markets? I think it's going to be a good year for certain sectors, but not the entire index. I think it's going to be okay. flattish as election years often right. are. Leave that as a tease for more to come. We're going to find out which sectors from David yeah. he favors coming into 2024. We'll see more of David in a moment. This is the biggest sell-off for FedEx yeah. shares this year. If you pull up UPS, are all down in sympathy. Is this a bellwether for a cargo recession right, or let, some sort of slowdown. Let me just ask David, what do you think? FedEx is a strong company. You know, it's 250 right now. It hit 150 in September of 2022 when there was a big worry about this. We bought it heavily. I think you were with me. We had a dinner with that. Fred yeah, Smith, yeah, 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 the CEO, yeah. founder, and FedEx executed brilliantly out of that pricing power. We ended up selling it in September of this year at higher than this price today because it just realized a lot of gains very quickly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, we should mention, by the way, good. Fred Smith is not the CEO anymore, but no. he is the chairman. The chairman the still and the yeah. founder. Um, FedEx is very good at operating. This stock really depends on your timeline. If you're okay. long term, I wouldn't worry. Short term, they could have some issues. Switching to General mm-hmm. Mills, they reported before the bell. How did they do? Clearly, not so well. Oh, Stocks down almost 4%. So they make Cheerios, Nature Valley, right. think uh, cereal, snacks. They cut their full year sales forecast. Now, it is a dividend industry. pick from David. What it do you is. think of it? I love this company. I want to point out they're not down in the food sales. All of the organic sales growth was Blue Buffalo, which is their pet product. I see. So pet product was supposed to be up about 4%. It was down 4%. Yeah. They have to work through that issue. But Cheerios, Yo Play. Betty Crocker, Nature Valley. Don't bet against these name okay. brands. They They're are going to do very well. Uh, Winnebago, the RV people. We know they were popular during the pandemic. How are they doing? Now? Uh, they also make pontoons. Oh, I didn't as know in that. the boat. Yes, and their marine Ooh, but segment. They're taking a hit today. Disappointed more than their RV uh, segment. Is that a dividend pick? It's not. It's a okay. name we've looked at over the years, but we've never owned it. Okay. And nor have I, do I think I've ever been in a Winnebago. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Bullish on Chipotle. 
JP Morgan says they're going wow. to 2500 That's a $600 increase from their uh. previous price target. They IPO'd back in 2006 at, David, were, one, were you one of the people who, get, who got them How at much? 22? 22. Twenty two dollars in two thousand and six. Now twenty three hundred and change. Wow! What do you think, Dave? It's uh, trading at fifty five times last year's earnings. That's a lot of burritos. And by the <laughs> way, at twenty five hundred, that's only a couple percent from where it is now. JP's new price target. Right. Uh, it's just way too rich for us. It's a very high beta stock, even though it's up so much. It's come up and down yes, fifty, sixty percent yeah. several times. They're, just not a name for us. They're investing in automation big time. I know every company is, but they are specifically and it's working, that can help them bring down some of those labor costs. There you go. Uh, ultimately, they have to start paying a dividend for them to be serious uh, for about rewarding their investors. For you to get serious I mean, about yeah. them, too. <laughs> if I'm spending that much per share, I do want a dividend. Good stuff. You pay nothing. Lauren, nothing. thank you very much. David, you're still with us and going to stay for the hour. Thank you very much. David, you brought us a couple more dividend picks. Let's start with Verizon. You know, Verizon is up significantly here in the last six weeks as the whole market is. They spent a couple of years really struggling as they were spending billions of dollars on CapEx to build out 5G. We think they're now really reaping the profits from that. They've improved their wireless service. Verizon is up off of its lows that were around $30 in October. It's now near 38, still yielding about 7%. They're not going to cut that dividend. We really like Verizon going into 24. Is it out of favor value stock? True, it. Financial? Truett? Yeah, well, Truist is another one that's up quite a bit. It had been down in the 20s. It is now up to almost 37 and is a regional bank that as rates come down, their net interest margin comes up. They're not having to pay out so much in deposits. They were never in the risk of that First Republic and Silicon Valley stuff. We think Truist gets back into Truist. the 40s next year. Yeah, my folks used to use that. Yeah. All right. Thank you, David. I happen to know that you're going to be traveling during this holiday season. Are you worried about it? You're going overseas, right? Yeah, I've, I've tried to set the expectation low enough that there won't be disappointment. But my family and I, uh, I have three kids, Mitchell, Sadie, Graham. We're going to Switzerland, and I've told them, be prepared for some uh, long lines at the airport. That's a good idea. David, thank you so much for being Thanks, here for David. the hour. I appreciate it.